My friends, the Lord be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, friends, to this service of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Garner, and Happy New Year. I'm going to say 2023 as often as I can over the next few days because those words, those numbers together seem a little odd right now uh, to me and perhaps to you as well. It is a new year, which always signals some sort of change. And one thing, though, that we can rely on is that which does not change, and that is the God who loves us, the God we worship and adore this day, the God we know in Jesus Christ, and the God who sustains us through the work and power of the Holy Spirit on every step of our journey. So let us, in this new year, continue to do what we have tried to do in years past, to live and share the good news of Jesus Christ as faithfully as we can, knowing that God will be with us as we succeed and as we try, try again. Friends, I do have some announcements to share with you about what God is doing amongst us these days as a new year begins. As I share those announcements, I do invite you to take the uh, pads on the center of the aisle and to sign and pass them along for others to sign as well. A note that we are celebrating communion today. What a good way to kick off a new year by sharing this sacrament together. And we do have individually wrapped communion packets for any who might want them uh, as we celebrate the sacrament today. There will be a server with those, so please do uh, uh, make your preference known at that time near the end of our service. Speaking of service, I want to say thank you to all those who uh, helped with our fifth Saturday commitment to hope yesterday. Um, We had a good crowd uh, and worked also with Garner Christian Fellowship. Um, uh, We are always indebted to the leadership of Julie Tedder uh, in guiding us and helping us. um, And we even encountered, Bill, I was told to tell you this, we even encountered a voice there that many people were trying to recruit for the choir. So you and I will talk a little later about that um, uh, and about, uh, about our new friend Andre, perhaps, um, and maybe we all will get to meet him and enjoy the gift of song that he has as well. But thank you to all those who helped uh, uh, there to serve, but also provided dishes, provided prayers, uh, and continue to provide uh, dignity to those who are a part of the Ministry of Hope. Next Saturday, January the 7th, starting I think around 9 o'clock in the morning, we will be doing our Christmas cleanup, but we will also be having a short prayer service at the conclusion of that cleanup, probably approximately 10.30, or I may be saying that so you come at 10.30 and help us with the last little bit, and we actually start the prayer service at 10.45. But in either event, we will be cleaning up, putting decorations away, but also having a prayer service where we can mark the transition to a new year. We can give thanks for things of the past and share our hopes uh, about things for the future. I invite you to come be a part of that next Saturday, January 7th. You can go ahead and get a jump start, though, on some of our cleanup um, by taking home a poinsettia. We still have uh, a few here uh, in the chancel area as well as those in the narthex. If you had not yet been able to get a poinsettia uh, that you bought uh, uh, this year in honor or in memory of someone, or you just want a poinsettia because you need a little bit more red or white or pink uh, in your home uh, as January begins, I invite you to take that uh, before they uh, go to another place, a, a farm for poinsettias, um, a, a, little, a little bit away where they can frolic and bloom uh, even more fully. So please do take uh, a poinsettia with you uh, today if you feel so led. Next Sunday, also January 8th, will be our ordination and installation of new church officers. And so we are thankful for those who have said yes to the call to be deacons and elders for this congregation and for Jesus Christ Church Universal. Um, And we will have a good time of celebrating uh, that next Sunday. 
Um, today, we have a congregational meeting after worship. Uh, so uh, we will um, conclude in a little bit of a, of a different way. Um, uh, uh, after the benediction, uh, we will go into our congregational meeting uh, before we sing our benedictory response, Go Now in Peace. Um, we'll have a minute that if for anyone who cannot stay for the meeting um, uh, would like to uh, go on to what they do have scheduled next, we'll give a period of grace uh, for folks to move in that way, as well as give a moment for those who will be a part of leading the meeting a chance to get organized as well. The purpose of our meeting is to receive the budget for 2023 as information, as well as to vote on uh, a change in the minister's terms of call. Uh, uh, Deb Wallace, the uh, moderator, chair of our Finance and Stewardship Committee, will be uh, assisting with that, uh, as will, I think, uh, perhaps Jane Kanabi in helping passing out um, some information about that. So please do stay uh, as you can. It'll take about maybe 10 minutes or less, um, depending on how many questions you all may have this day. And I think for the first Sunday of 2023, that's all I have at this time. And so I would invite us to, once again, enter our hearts and minds to a time of worship as we are called to worship by our liturgist for today, Lucy Whipple.
please be seated. So I came up a little early, and I forgot something uh, that's important to remember on uh, the day we celebrate Epiphany. There's always myrrh, right? There's always more. There's always myrrh. There's always myrrh. Oh, Nate, that's a dad joke. Nate is uh, already sighing uh, himself on that. So thank you for indulging me. Oh, friends, God indulges so much in us, so much that is silly and foolish, so much that is petty and unseemly, so much that is wrong and misdirected. God indulges us, and God loves us, and God forgives and has mercy on us. And so we are able to be honest about all those things that can Separate us from God and from one another. So let us be honest now. As we offer our prayer of confession, you find printed in your bulletin, and then by praying silently. Friends, with one heart and voice, let us confess our sin. God of justice, we confess that even though Christ has come, we still are often passive while others are oppressed. We guard our own prosperity at the expense of those who are poor. We ignore the cries of those in need of help. Forgive us for hiding in the shadows rather than embracing the light of your love. Judge us with mercy, we pray, and extend your grace to us. Strengthen our faithfulness to you and to all who are precious in your sight, we pray in the name of Christ our light. Amen. O Christ, have mercy. Amen. Friends, the prophet Isaiah declares, Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. For God is doing a new thing already springing forth. Can we not perceive it? Friends, indeed, God gives us faith, hope, and love to trust and to see and to perceive this good news that is already true and continuing to emerge. And so may we make this the call and the claim that we live into. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. You are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. Friends, being forgiven in Christ means we are also given a responsibility to share that love and hope and peace with one another. So let us do that now with our call and response and then sharing signs of Christ's peace with one another as you feel led to do. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us share Christ's peace. Peace, 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 love you, buddy. Hmm? Hmm? Peace, peace.
seated. It's time for our com- uh, conversation with the young and young at heart, and so I'd invite our youngest to come meet with me. Hey, Nate. Hey, Graham. Come on down. So today, you know what story we're going to talk about today in Scripture? We already sang about them. Do you know who we're going to talk about in Scripture? The three kings. We also call them the wise men. Uh, they're there, right on the table, um, represented on the table there with some figures. Um, how, how, many, how many wise men, sometimes they're called kings, sometimes wise men, sometimes magi, a lot of people think of them as astrologers because they were looking at the stars and mapping out the stars and following the stars. How many of them were there? Three. Three. Okay. How many, Nate? Three. Three. Okay. Anyone else want to guess out there? How many were there? Someone said four. Someone said that. Well, here's the thing. When we read the Gospel of Matthew, which is where this story uh, comes to us from, we don't know how many there are. It never says there were three kings or three wise men or three magi. It just says there were magi. It just says there were multiple of them. They use kind of a plural noun, right? Like they added S to the end, you know, wise men's, something like that. Um, what we do know is that there were three gifts. And so, so it's kind of natural to think, well, three gifts, three people, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it could have been multiple, right? They could, have, they could have given them like three things of gold and three things of frankincense and three things of myrrh. I, so it's kind of interesting. We, we think of it as three, but, um, but there may have been more. And I kind of like that idea. I'm going to tell you why I like that idea. Um, because I, uh, I, don't, I don't have a lot of gold. Do y'all have a lot of gold? No. Um, and, and do any of us know what frankincense is? No, Frank. It's kind of like a perfume, but I don't, I don't, I don't have any perfume. And myrrh, myrrh was like this bitter herb um, that like was used like by like undertakers back in the day. Like when someone died, they would put myrrh around to like prepare a body for burial. We we don't. Yeah, that's kind of creepy, right? And that verse, that verse about myrrh and the song we sang is a little. I mean, it's 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 a little gloomy. It's a little gloomy, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. But I don't have, I don't have myrrh. Do you have myrrh? I have, I do not have any myrrh. So I don't have gold. I don't have frankincense. I don't have myrrh. But I bet we do have some gifts that we can give to other people, right? What do we have that are gifts that we can give to another person to help them feel better, or help them feel loved or important? What do you think? What do you think? Um, you have a a smile, although mine might be a little, you know, creepy too right now. Um, you can smile at someone to let them know, hey, you make me happy, and I see you. Um, right now, we are giving each other the gift of time. Y'all are coming up here. Y'all are being very patient with me. Y'all are giving me the gift of time, and I really appreciate it. Um, we have the gift of love. We have the gift of the blessing bags. Um, we have the gift of hope, like those who went to hope yesterday um, and served food and did that sort of thing. Um, we have all kinds of gifts that we can give. And so because there may actually have been more than three magi or wise men or wise women or kings or queens, we can all think of ourselves is those who come to Jesus to give gifts and to share those gifts with each other. You can be a wise person. You can be a magi. You can give gifts. And that's important for all of us to remember. Let's pray. Oh God, your giving knows no ending, so help us share all of the gifts you have given us so that we might also show how much we love Jesus and how much 
he means to us. Even when we don't think we have any gifts, help us know that we have a smile, a good word, time, anything to share. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. All is well. Hear now this prayer for illumination. Gracious one, as you revealed your light to the world in Jesus, so reveal your light to us today through the word in scripture which guides us to follow your light in Christ. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them 
the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And reading on in verses 10 through 15. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. O Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Amen. So the wise men always finish last. In their sequined bathrobes and homemade crowns embellished with costume jewelry, as in so many Christian Christmas pageants, they always seem to be the last piece, filling the last gap in the nativity scene. Their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the last sentence of a grand and glorious story. In our imaginations, that is, and on our calendars, too, the 12 days of Christmas in fact, conclude on the traditional day of Epiphany, January the 6th. And many cultures outside of the U.S. mark that day where the wise men or magi or astrologers or what have you arrive. They mark that day rather than December 25th with a celebration, with a grand feast. And it tends to be around this time, too, that with a deep breath, we begin to pack up the wreaths, take home the poinsettias, box the greens and the tinsel and the lights, because Christmas is ended. How interesting, then, the Matthew's Gospel, after first reviewing Jesus' family tree and describing his birth, puts the story of the wise men so very near the beginning. And how curious, too, that rather than give us a pleasant, picturesque final scene of Christmas glory, the story ends with hasty departures. The wise men go home by another road. The holy family flees for Egypt of all places because of the wrath of a double-crossed Herod, desperate to keep his power at any cost. 
The truth is, of course, that while this story is most often read and celebrated after Joseph's dreams and Jesus' birth, after choirs of angels and herds of shepherds, courtesy of Luke. This is a story that is at once an ending, a beginning, and perhaps most of all, an ongoing story. The ending part we've already touched on, noting how it is reflective of our experience. It's as if the wise men are like members of the family who come to visit, not right at the moment of birth, but a few weeks later, bringing their gifts and warm wishes, their later arrival, finally completing the list of those we most wanted to see and receive at such a special time. But their coming also signifies another sort of ending, You see, the writer of Matthew's gospel wanted to be as clear as possible about the difference in the power of God in Christ who would shepherd his people and the power that tyrants like Herod always believe is theirs. So the wise men's arrival to pay this new child king homage signifies an end to the ways of Herod, ways that we must admit often tempt our own hearts too. This is an end to the idea that outsiders, foreigners, those not educated in our schools or in our tradition, an end to the idea that they are excluded from God's promise to love, repair, and restore all things. It's an end to the definition of power being and how well you can lie and deceive and manipulate and instead defining power by that which prompts curiosity, joy, and gratitude. It's an end to fear having the final say. Though certainly fear still has the ability to speak often. But just like with any great story, the closing of one chapter leads quickly into the beginning of a new one. Howard Thurman, an African American author, educator, civil rights leader, and theologian, whose long distinguished career included serving as a mentor to Martin Luther King Jr., captures this idea of beginning quite well in his work, his poetic work, entitled The Work of Christmas. Thurman writes, When the song of the angels is stilled, When the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Thurman's words give voice to what this day of epiphany has long been about for the church. Again, the Feast of Epiphany is not as familiar to us as it is to other cultures, but it is important to note that these celebrations often focus both on the fulfillment of joy and promise that Christ's birth brings, God's light shining not just for a select few, but for all the world. But these celebrations also speak to a renewed commitment to following Christ, so much so that as Pastor David 
Lowe's writes, in Eastern Orthodox traditions, one popular way of marking the day is by throwing a cross into freezing waters of a river or lake and diving in to retrieve it. Now, I'm not advocating that we begin the year with that exact leap of faith. Such a practice does suggest that Epiphany is a time to get going. For the wise men's journey imparts what God's ending and beginning in Christ teaches us is that we too must be on the move to do the very work of Christmas. So that any family that is fleeing terror and seeking safety might find a warm refuge. So that voices, even if they are small and simple, are encouraged to speak and act in resistance to Herod's desperate grip on personal power and privilege. So that all are encouraged to give what they have in thanks for Christ's presence. Be they precious metal or spices, or again, those gifts of time, attention, love. It's time to get going, church, so that hope may indeed be louder and truer than fear. Such is the work we begin anew today, January 1st, 2023. A few days before Epiphany officially, but why not get a head start? A head start in continuing work that we have participated in before, like that with hope, or Garner Area Ministries, like what Presbyterian women do the year round, what men of the church are gathering and preparing to do. It's the work of study and worship of music and prayer and service. It's work we have done, and it is new work too, that will certainly emerge from all the dreams and visions God continues to give to us as we go along the way of the Lord as we follow Christ to the table, to eat and to drink, to be made whole and new, so that we may continue to the cross and beyond. So let's get going. Let's get working to tell the story again in word and deed. That from beginning to end, God's light shines for all people, and it continues forever and always. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, having heard your word read and proclaimed in Scripture, we ask you to take and seal it upon our hearts so that indeed we might get going to share your love in whatever way is possible. For we offer all we have in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. At this time, friends, I'd invite you to stand as you are able as we share in today's affirmation of faith. Would you please stand? Today's affirmation comes from the Heidelberg Catechism, a teaching tool developed during the height of the Protestant Reformation in Egypt, a question and answer that helps us know to whom we belong. I will read the question, and we will all together read the answer. Friends, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. 
He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation because I belong to him. Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we continue to move and live and have our being in the God who loves us by presenting to God our tithes and gifts and all morning offerings. God of beginning and ending and beginning again, take these first fruits of a new year and make them shine with love and grace for all the world. In Christ's name we give and pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture tells us they will come from north and south, from east and west. To sit at this table, which is not my table or your table, it is Christ's table. And here we all have a place. We all have room to be. So come. Come, you who have much faith and you who would like to have a little more. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been here in some time. 
Come, you who have triumphed in your walk with Christ, and you who have stumbled, for we all have stumbled. Come, because it is Christ who welcomes us and feeds us here. Will you please join me in the responsive beginning of our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. For you are the eternal God, our creator. And you have given us life and second birth in your spirit. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. We remember how you claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up also the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. Always your love has been steadfast. Therefore we praise you, for you are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed too is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. We remember how Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a community promising to be with his disciples until the end of the age. And he sent them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you, O God, and went freely to his death so the world might be set free from suffering and sin. And you raised him from death and raised us also to live a new life with him. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, you send us out as disciples of old to make disciples as he commanded. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take now this bread and cup and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. And we bear witness to new life given through him. Bless us now with your Holy Spirit so that what we do here might truly unite us with the living Christ might be a true communion of Christ's body for all the world and every time and place and every nation among every people who put their trust in you. And as this bread and cup feed and fill us, may we also feed and fill others, making the hungry whole, welcoming the lonely, caring for the sick, offering friendship and hope to all who need it. In all things, let your spirit empower the life we share and ignite our spirit of service in the world. Give us strength to keep going, to keep moving, to keep serving until we feast with you on that blessed day at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, who with Jesus and the Holy Spirit reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, I invite you into the prayer that Jesus taught us, that we may pray with the boldness of the children of God, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I now pass on to you what was first handed down to me. The night he was arrested, Jesus first gathered with his friends, and he took a common loaf, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it saying, this is my body. Take and eat it, remembering me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do it also remembering me. For friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord until he comes again, and he will come again. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I would invite our servers forward, please. And as they do come forward, I would remind you we do have individual wrapped communion packets. And also remind you that as the elements are handed out, first the bread and then the cup, if you would hold on to both of those until all have been served, both elements, and we will commune together.
Let us taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. God, you're great, and God, you're good. We thank you for so much more than food. By your hand, we all are fed. Thank you, dear Lord, this day for daily bread. Amen. And now, let us stand again as we are able to sing our uh, sending hymn, number 150, As With Gladness, Men of Old. So friends, after our congregational meeting, it is really time to get going (laughs) and time to move. And even during that meeting, we do the work of the church, the work of Christmas, the work we are called to do. Simple, steadfast, true, to heal, to bring hope, to share God's love. So may we do that in this year, in this week, in this day ahead. May we do so living our hope and not our fear. And as we do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace, now and forever. Alleluia and amen. You may be seated. So again, we now turn to a congregational meeting. Um, uh, I would invite uh, Deb Wallace and uh, perhaps Jane Kanabi, others who maybe need to come up to the front in case uh, Deb, I know, is going to speak. Others may also be able to answer questions that may be fielded at this time. Um, Our sound in the back is also our clerk for the meeting, Mike Koenig, uh, associate clerk, stated clerk right now for the session until ordination and installation next week. Um, He is also going to be taking minutes for this meeting from the balcony. Um, And Mike, I will ask if we have a quorum present. 
Yes, we do. A reminder that quorum is, uh, is 10% of our active membership, so we need uh, around 13.25 people, something like that. Um, so we've got uh, more than enough uh, here for that. Um, I'm going to begin uh, this meeting with a word of prayer and then a word of introduction before I turn it over to Deb. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks that in the midst of all that is going on, you slow us down to do business that needs to be done, to reflect on the faithful stewardship that we have enacted in service to you. Thank you for all those who have given of their time and their talent, of their resources to create this budget um, and to make it a, a living document that will enable our service to you and to this community. Bless this time that we have together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, what uh, Melissa and Jane are passing out uh, are copies of one uh, that will help us in one of the items for our congregational meeting this morning. Um, that is the item to approve proposed changes in the ministers in my terms of call, which requires a congregational vote to do so. And so that is a breakdown where you can see the changes from the previous year to this one. We had also planned to have um, a summary sheet for the budget as a whole, um, but in printing out the spires for January, the printer in the office completely ran out of toner uh, and ink. And so um, those uh, budget summaries did not, were not able to be printed um, in the quantity and amount that they would have been needed to for today. Deb is very good at speaking off the cuff. She's already said she does this kind of thing for a living. So she's going to share verbally. As soon as we get toner is coming this week, um, as soon as we get that, we'll make sure to have copies available in the office, also in the Narthex, uh, beginning next Sunday um, and weeks to come, so that you can also pick up a copy of that budget um, in order to see it. That budget uh, is the responsibility of the session to approve and to implement, and so it is shared um, as information with you this morning. I call upon Deb to share some of that information before we move on to the second item. Good morning and Happy New Year. Um, I guess we know what Stephanie's first purchase will be for the new year and her first expenditure. But um, I wanted to just go through the highlights and um, the changes from when we met the last time to talk about the um, faith budget. Through much deliberation and, and through so much gratitude to both the, the session, to you all, to the Finance and Stewardship Committee, a lot of hard work was put into this time and time and time and a lot of eyes looking at it to make sure that we could get to um, a good balanced budget. We're looking at right now $253,020 for operating expenses for the upcoming year. Um, the difference in that and last year, the budget for last year was $246,180. Um, I, I would say the, the majority of the increase for this year is our ability to be able to keep the staff increases in place. We were able to do that. Um, we moved some things around, crunched some numbers. It got a little hectic sometimes when we thought we were going to have to zero out some areas, but we were able to, to leave money in different places for that as well. Um, again, we discussed in the, the faith budget meeting where um, building and grounds would, would look like it was taking a hit. It did take it did take a little bit of a hit, but we also have resources in place to cover some of those other things that were on that list. So as we go through this, we're looking at a difference of about $6,840 from last year. Again, the increases center around um, the upcoming increases for staff and uh, taxes and those types of things that go with that. As we go through, we, um, we did find some things like the audiovisual system that were left off during the faith budget review and we added those back in for around $75. So there aren't areas that are drastically different from what you looked at in the faith budget, but there are some areas that we did have to reduce in order to um, meet both expect, expected pledges coming in that we had not received, pledges we had received, and what we think will be unpledged amounts for the year. Are there any questions for Deb just about that general overview of the budget?
from the previous budget or the faith budget? Um, there were, let me just make sure before I misspeak. Um, we were able to, where we thought we were going to have to make cuts from the faith budget, we were able with, with moving the money around to be able to put dollar amounts in, in different areas. Some were reduced, um, like for instance, the youth budget was re reduced down, but there still remained money in there for operating expenses. And we hope that as the year goes on that we'll see the, the different places that we can balance out. questions we'll move on to the second item uh, for us which would be um, to approve the changes in the minister's terms of call um, that's on that sheet and so you have uh, what is in that column under 2023 is what is in the 2023 budget but before that can be finalized it does need approval um, from the congregation so um, uh, probably would be appropriate to have a motion and a second to that effect and then if there's any discussion um, or questions about that, um, we can talk about that. Great. Okay. Thank you. So I've got I've got a first and a second. Um, so are there other discussions or questions about uh, those changes? Um, I'll point out one. This is just something I discovered uh, in uh, is working with budget and finance for this. Um, uh, you'd be making a vote on this even if there wasn't uh, a change in salary for me um, because the, uh, the medical benefits package uh, that the PCUSA does uh, changed its percentage. Um, uh, and so there was going to be an increase in that portion anyway. Um, and that would have also required approval from you all um, uh, to do that. So um, that is one uh, change that um, uh, was going to come regardless. Um, and I'll just say I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for the congregation's generosity as a whole, uh, particularly to the rest of the staff, as well as to me, to uh, try to uh, make these changes um, in, in our compensation. It is a joy to serve um, y'all, and I always feel like I'm paid way better than I deserve. So um, thank you for that. Are there other questions or any comments about that? I can leave if someone really wants to ask a question. <laughs> I can be, I can be. Uh, I can, I, can, I can step out and um, uh, we'll do that. And then uh, when someone come get me, when y'all do that. And Deb can ask for the question. Okay, questions? I think when he might have confused you saying if we had had a year where we had to stay flat and we had no change, there would have been a change because of the medical, and so we would be voting on this anyways. But yes, there every line item except the deferred, um, no, I'm sorry, the medical supplement, you know, that's an amount that he picks that he wants to it's a flexible medical thing, and that's the only thing that's, that did not change on this whole sheet on the front and the back. Everything changed. So... The professional development funds are what's called the voucher reim reimbursable expenses. That's number 15. Yes, we did reduce that by 500. 
So, um, and that was to help with, with getting it to a balanced budget. And he agreed to it because he wasn't spending all that. That number 15 would be any um, con like continuing education classes, um, some of the, th the items that he wears, if he takes prospective members out to lunch, his travel, like when he goes to hospitals, all that comes out of there. And so he's always thought we were extremely generous in that funds and that's where we did pull back. So that's the one decrease you'll see on the whole sheet. It went from 5,500 to 5,000. Am I loud enough? Okay. But, but we're voting for this, but also when we're voting, we're voting that we're accepting him for another year. Every year you have to vote to accept your minister for another year. Additional questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Will someone grab in? I was, I, I was sweating. I was sweating. Okay. Yeah. One more year. Yeah. God, God bless you all. Um, thank you again to the session and finance and stewardship uh, ministry team for the thorough work they did. Thank you all for your generosity. There, there continue to be gifts um, coming in uh, and pledges coming in. So um, that's why we always say a budget is a living document and, and very many parts of it um, because we adjust and change as um, as things become available or things change as well. Um, so thank you for continuing to offer your hope in this way. Um, I've already said a benediction and a prayer, and so to close this congregational meeting, um, uh, uh, I would ask uh, everyone in favor of closing the meeting to please stand as you are able as we sing Go Now in Peace. <laughs>